practice exercise 5.13 consecutive, we're going to write a method named consecutive. It'll accept three integers as parameters and return true if they are consecutive numbers. We have more information of that right here. So we're going to have a public static, uh, not void, but boolean because we are returning a boolean. And then we're going to have our method, which is consecutive. And we're passing in three things, int n1, int n2, and int n3. These are simply just names. And that is our method header done once we correct this. So with our method header done, we're gonna look at what we need to do. Well, we need to have a minimum value, a middle value, and then we need to have a maximum value. And so to find our minimum value, we can use the math class. We're gonna set our int min equal to, and then inside of here, we're gonna use math.min. And if you want more information about that, there's a video in the uh, playlist, actually the video, in the description, link below the like button. Pretty cool. So we'll have math.min, and then inside of here, we are going to have our values. So we have n1, and then we're gonna pass in another math.min, because we need the values of our n2, and our n3, and then we can end this line. We're gonna do the same thing to find our max. Now, we're gonna find our middle, but we're going to do it after this. The reason why we need to do it after this is because we can use some simple math to actually add and manipulate our values to get it. So with this done, we can now do our middle. We're going to set our int mid equal to, and instead of here, we can realize that we have our minimum, we have our max, and it's two out of these three numbers. And so if we just take our three numbers, n1 and n2 and n3, and add them all together, and then subtract from this our minimum plus our max, we are going to find and weed out whichever is our middle value. Now, we are going to want to return if they are consecutive. So now that they're sorted, we are going to return if our minimum plus one is equal to our mid. We also have to make sure that our mid plus one is equal to our max. If that is true, it's going to return true. Otherwise, it's just going to return false. And so that's it for our function. We can click submit. And I definitely didn't spell that right. So I'm going to copy and paste this down here. Click submit again. And we passed nine out of nine tests with all the true and falses. So that's how you do exercise 5.13, which is consecutive.